because there's clear clinical evidence that nicotine inhibits aromatized enzyme activity within the brain. And all three metabolites, nicotine, cotinine, and anabasine, actually inhibit aromatized enzyme activity within the uterus and various forms of cancer, and perhaps other tissues of the body as well. Vigor, Steve, here. So you might have heard Andrew Tate's claims that his serum testosterone levels are that high because of the 20 cigars that he smokes every single day, besides the 25 cups of coffee that he has on a daily basis. These statements are wild and very far out there. You would basically need to smoke a cigar every 45 minutes or drink a cup of coffee every 30 to 40 minutes of your waking hour. It's doable, though. Don't get me wrong. But you're basically smoking cigars and drinking coffee the entire way through. And it will be very hard to fall asleep with all that nicotine and caffeine in your bloodstream. So these statements made me raise an eyebrow, actually bilaterally. Both eyebrows were raised. But I'm also intrigued because I'm quite the connoisseur of exogenous testosterone and a cigar aficionado. But any way I can find to increase my endogenous testosterone production while off cycle, I'm going to look into it. Right? So I did all of the research so you don't have to. And the evidence is compelling. It appears that smoking nicotine can actually increase total testosterone and free testosterone concentrations in men in about 50% of the cases. But for the scope of this video, we're only going to focus on the evidence which is actually proving that total testosterone and free testosterone and some of the other sex hormone and endocrine markers are higher in smokers compared to non-smokers. The only problem here is, is that all of the scientific evidence have been performed on cigarette smokers, not on cigar smokers. There's a bit of a difference here because cigarettes you inhale into the lungs and absorb the nicotine and some of the metabolites that way. And with smoking cigars, the nicotine absorption is solely sublingual. Don't, for the life of you, start inhaling cigar smoke. You'll be coughing up a lung. It's a very unpleasant experience. Now, there's a huge overlap, though, between cigarettes and cigars because both are made from tobacco. So we're going to extrapolate from the scientific evidence, even though all of the scientific evidence have been performed on cigarette smoking and not cigar smoking. Again, 50% of the casings, there's about an equal amount of scientific evidence that shows that cigarette smoking or nicotine or some of the metabolites have no real positive effect on total testosterone levels. Um, but about half of it, which we're going to use in this video, is actually very compelling. Before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment video with them, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by joining either the YouTube or Patreon memberships, where you can vote for upcoming deep dives or join the weekly vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday, so you can get your questions answered privately before we go public and then turns into a super chat, super flood. So let's go all the way back to October 1988 to a study performed by Das et al. titled Cigarette Smoking and Serum Sex Hormones in Men. This study with a total of 284 male participants follow, were followed for four years at the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania MRFIT Center. And it showed that serum total and free testosterone concentrations were positively correlated with cigarette smoking among the longitudinal sample and the controls. So over four years, a lot of um, measurements were taken amongst the 284 males, showing that total and free testosterone levels were significantly higher compared to the men who weren't smoking. This positive correlation was also independent of age, relative body weight, alcohol drinking, consumption, blood pressure, and HDL cholesterol. There was no association between either serum estradiol or estrone concentrations and cigarette smoking in this population. We do know that nicotine, cotinine, and anabasine, metabolites found in tobacco or occur within the body after ingesting nicotine, those inhibit various steps, various enzymes, in the overall steroid hormone cascade. And whether that's before testosterone is actually synthesized from cholesterol or further down the line, preventing metabolism of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone or estradiol, actually inhibiting the breakdown of testosterone and some of the other androgens, um, that is actually very well documented. There could be a whole separate video in itself. So let me know down below if you would like to see that, because there's clear clinical evidence that nicotine inhibits aromatized enzyme activity within the brain. And all three metabolites, nicotine, cotinine, and anabasine, actually inhibit aromatized enzyme activity within the uterus and various forms of cancer, and perhaps other tissues of the body as well. So let me know if you would like to see a separate video for that. I don't want anybody to start using nicotine 
for the purpose of inhibiting one's aromatized enzymes in order to get lean or deal with some of the metabolism of testosterone in the estradiol. Oh, and before we continue, keep in mind that body weight, the body mass index, is inversely correlated with serum testosterone levels. So the higher body fat or body mass index that you have, the lower your serum testosterone levels are going to be. Some of these studies are going to show that there's a correlation between body mass index, nicotine, and testosterone levels. Low body mass index, uh, nicotine intake, obviously, at various cigarettes per day, showing that testosterone levels are higher. And then there's an inverse correlation where body mass index is higher, but there's no smoking in place, probably because nicotine is such a potent appetite suppressant. So you smoke, you have low body mass index, you don't smoke, you have high body mass index, in which case the testosterone level is also low. So keep that in mind going forward. There's a little bit of a uh, caveat when interpreting this scientific evidence. And the statement is kind of confirmed in a study performed in 1989. So only a couple months later, performed by Michael et al. titled Relationship Between Body Mass Index, Cigarette Smoking, and Plasma Sex Hormones in Normal Male Twins. So here they analyzed 159 adult male twins to see what their body mass index, their serum concentrations of sex hormones, and if there's a correlation there. Now, some of the twins were both smoking. In some instances, one twin was smoking and the other one was not. And other twins, both of them were not smoking. So again, there's a little bit of an overlap for body mass index and sex hormone concentrations in relation to smoking or non-smoking individuals in twin pairs. And the results show that body mass index significantly affected sex hormone binding globulin, where smoking had no effect. So unfortunately, we can't use smoking, whether that's cigarettes or cigars, extrapolating a little bit here, to control our sex hormone binding globulin levels. If they're too high, nicotine is not going to have any effect. And if they're too low, nicotine is not going to have an effect either. You would still need to use something like proviron, boron, or selective estrogen receptor modulators to kind of modulate that. The results also show that the plasma contents of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone and the luteinizing hormone to testosterone ratio were affected by both body mass index and smoking. Although, after allowing for body mass index, smoking was less significant. So this study shows on all of these twins that body mass index is more indicative of serum testosterone levels, and in this case, testosterone and luteinizing hormone levels, compared to smoking. The analysis suggested that the smoking effect on sex hormones, except perhaps for testosterone, is secondary, secondary, guys, so not primary, secondary to the effects on body mass index. Very interesting results. If you go further down in the literature, you see that some of these results are actually replicated or kind of disproven where smoking is a clear and sole primary driver of total testosterone, free testosterone, and some of the other sex hormones which they're investigating. For example, a study performed in November of 1994 by Field et al. titled The Relation of Smoking, Age, Relative Weights, and dietary intake to serum adrenal steroids, sex hormones, and sex hormone binding globulin levels in middle-aged men. So this study, they actually tracked protein intake, fat intake, carbohydrate intake, a mineral intake, vitamin intake. So all of the micronutrients and the micronutrients were investigated and uh, tracked and compared to smoking age, relative body weight, and the overall hormone levels within the body. A very interesting study. Again, all of the references and citations are down below in case you're interested. This study took 1,241 randomly sampled middle-aged men from the United States compared with non-smokers and independent of relative uh, body mass index and age, cigarette smokers had an increased serum level of DHEA, 18% higher, DHEA sulfate, 13% higher, cortisol, 5% higher, so that's something you definitely don't want, androstenedione, 33% higher, testosterone, 9% higher, DHD, dihydrotestosterone, 14% higher, and SHBG, 8% higher. So among these 1,241 middle-aged dudes from the United States, only the smokers had high sex hormone and adrenal levels. Androstenedione, total plasma testosterone, albumin-bound testosterone, that's freely, so that's bound to SHBG, dihydrotestosterone and SHBG decreased with increasing body mass index. Again, we've mentioned this several times already. The data suggested that serum adrenal steroids and sexual hormone concentrations in middle-aged men are more influenced by cigarette smoking, age, no brainer here, we already did a video about that, I'll link it at the end of this one, and obesity rather 
then dietary intake. 